the first book of Kings. So this is session number three. And in session one and two, we saw this amazing journey from the Antichrist, false son, having the kingdom or stealing, trying to steal the kingdom, and how it's transformed into the promised, prophesied, promised by God, prophesied by his prophets, confirmed in the heart of David, as well as in the heart of the bride, the wife, uh, Bathsheba, that the real son, the son from the loins of King David, the son after the heart of King David, because seed alone, Adonijah also had the seed of David in him, but his heart was stolen by the seed of the serpent. The seed of the tree of life is the word of God, not only his physical words that left his mouth, but the whole kingdom that's built upon this covenant of how God wants his king, paints his kingdom to uh, play out and be fulfilled. And that is ultimately all about the Father and his anointed one, the one that came in the name of Yahuwah, and that is Yahusha, Yahshua, Yehoshua. We've learned so much about how um, so many of the Old Testament biblical story characters have identified and symbolized and prophesied God the Father himself and how out of David comes Solomon, how out of God who reigns and who's the king and the husband over the nation of Israel, but in his manifestation in the flesh, he will regain that wife and that kingdom and that family back into his bosom that the enemy has tried to steal. And the enemy is not a stranger. It comes out of the very bosom of the Father himself. We never really out of the very bosom of the Father himself. We never really see, you know, where Solomon was born. But if we look at what God promised to David about Solomon, we know what right the prophet Nathan and Bathsheba has to stand firmly on this rock, on this foundation, on this starting point that God originally set in place. And although the whole world is following after Adonia together with the religious and the military, it doesn't matter because what has been written, what has been spoken by the voice of God himself, not only regarding Solomon, but we are reading these verses with two layers simultaneously the whole time. We've got David, Bathsheba, and Solomon and the prophet Nathan in the historical context. But overlaid the whole time, we have the historical context. But overlaid the whole time, we have the father promising Yeshua, the prince of peace, through the prophets all over history all the way to the book of Revelation. And we have the bride standing the whole time, being scared, watching out in the world what's happening and seeing that it's not the son that was born out of the house of Judah that's ruling and reigning this world. It's not Yahshua after whom the military and the church is running and serving and taking and deceiving the rest of humanity. It is the Antichrist and she's scared but she's reminded by the prophet of the words of God that is unchanging and he's not a man that he lies. So although she looks out in one direction, seeing the, the war and the battles out there, she comes, is the word of God that is born as a little child called the Prince of Peace, Shalom. And that is where the name of Solomon comes from. Let's read together. 1 Chronicles 22 verse 9, Behold, a son shall be born to you. Makes me think of, Behold, a son shall be born to you. You know, how many times in, does the prophet Isaiah talk about, Behold, a son will be born from an Alma, a young girl, from a closed womb, she'll be a virgin, and he'll be born in Bethlehem, and he'll be the son of David. And he'll be the prince of peace. He'll bring, he'll, he'll bring restoration in the house of Israel and Judah. He will bring the kingdom back together. And he will have rest from all his enemies because he will vanquish his enemies. 
and he will have a restored, he will vanquish his enemies and he will have a restored kingdom. His bride will come home and the marriage will happen again. And this is all done in the name of David, in the name of the Father, the, a house for my name, says Father Yahuwah. So all the time David and Solomon, but here it's really about God and Yeshua. Behold, a son shall be born to you, who shall be a man of rest. Well, we know the first time this son was promised he would be a man of sorrows. But with his second coming, he's going to be Solomon, the son of David. With his first coming, he was Joseph, the son or the son of Joseph, the suffering servant. But when he comes again and he restores the kingdom and the two houses and he uh, vanquishes his enemies and he rules for a thousand years in peace, he's the man of peace. He's the prince of peace. So he'll be a man of rest and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon. And Solomon in the Hebrew is Shalomo. And the root word is Shalom, which means to be perfect, to be whole to be complete. And once the um, entire word of God has run its full circle, like the Bible says, my word that has left my mouth will not return to me empty. It would fulfill, complete, make whole, shalom, everything that I've sent it out to accomplish. And when Yeshua did his first, it is done when he was a man of sorrows, Revelation says he will do his second. It is done as the Prince of Peace for us. <laughs> Unfortunately, not for the world, because he'll be out of his mouth and his robe is dipped in blood and he will press out and tread out the wine press in the anger and wrath of Yahuwah. But now for us, a son is to be born and his name shall be Shalom. And I will give him peace and quietness unto Israel all his days. He shall build a house for my name. This is true for Solomon. This is true for Yeshua. Break down this temple, I'll build it in three days. Because what is he talking about? The kingdom of God is built on his word, in his word, for his word, by his word. Since Genesis 1 verse 1, they are left off the beginning and the end of everything. And we, as the living stones, are built up in this tabernacle. That is why Solomon is ruling in peace. No enemy, no battle, no war ever. The best, richest, wisest, most peaceful king ever. As a representation of Messiah. Most peaceful king ever. As a representation of Messiah. And in him, the, the two houses is built back together in one tabernacle. Like we see over and over in the building of the tabernacle, how the curtains are brought together with the chaver, the, um, what was it, silver or bronze? Now I can't remember. I think it was silver, with the silver uh, pins that brings the curtains together. And then it says it will make one echad tabernacle. So the lost sheep of the house of Israel and the blind sheep from the house of Judah is brought together as one new man in the hand of Solomon, building a temple for the name of Yahuwah that will stand forever and will never be destroyed because the word of God has been written in the hearts, in the foreheads, in the hands, in what we love and these living stones of the temple is built upon the rock that is unmoving, the covenant that, that God spoke with his mouth. And that is the true kingdom. Temples of stone will come and go. And the revelation says the real temple, the original temple that Moses saw the blueprint of comes out of heaven from God. And he lives with his people. And finally, um, the kingdom is 100% the way that God originally it intended it to be, with the 12 foundations and the 12 pearly gates and the, the um, living stream and the tree of life and everything as he wanted it. Solomon had rest his entire life. He screwed it up. We'll get to the point where, again, out of the very loins of 
the truth of Yeshua out of the Father, out of death, in the turning into, into the worship of the Babylonian whore system, he from Christ figure becomes Antichrist figure. But that's much later on. We'll get to that. Right now, we're looking at Solomon in his symbology reference as Messiah. And God says, he'll build a house for my name. He shall be my son, and I will be his father. For how many men did God this say? He says all over the Bible, you'll be my people, I'll be your God. But for how many people did he say, he's my son, I'm his father? He said that to Yeshua in the New Testament. This is my son in whom I have pleasure in whom my heart delights. Just like David was a man after God's own heart, Solomon came come out of the physical loins and the spiritual heart of David. He was a man after God's own heart for the first half of his life. And God is his father, really telling us this is life. And God is his father, really telling us this is in the prophetic sense, talking about Yeshua. This is my son. And Yeshua says, God is my father. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom over all Israel, the restored house of Israel and Judah, forever. Solomon didn't rule forever. Solomon is not ruling right now. Solomon is dead. His bones has become dust in the grave. And yet these words of God is not from a man that they can lie. So they are still ringing true. The real kingdom, the real throne, the real authority of the house of David, of the loins of Judah, of whom Jacob said, the scepter will never leave the feet of Judah until Shiloh comes. Shiloh, Shalom, 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 until Messiah comes. He is the ruler who sits on the throne of David ruling over all Israel, all the Gentile nations who come out of their paganism are grafted into Israel. And this is over whom um, Yeshua rules for a thousand years in peace. And the rest of the nations will only uh, worship him and give obedience to him and are scared of him, but they're not in his kingdom in the thousand years. A beautiful prophecy and promise and covenant that God gives in 1 Chronicles 22, verse 9 and 10. And this is the words that Bathsheba and Nathan is now standing upon. These are the two witnesses. We see further in 1 Chronicles 22, God says, Now my son, he's speaking to David, he's speaking to you and me, um, he's teaching us how to also pray over, over our sons and daughters, like David was supposed to pray over his son. I prosper you, I built your house. Um, uh, now, my son, the Lord be with you and prosper you and build the house of, your, of Yahuwah, your Elohim, as he said of you. This is, this is what David is now saying over Solomon. Sorry, David is speaking to Solomon. And he's, he's praying these words, and he is confirming these words, and he is speaking these words, not only in, in the spiritual warfare over Solomon, but he's speaking it over his son, maybe blessing him at the Shabbat table, putting his hands on Solomon's head and on his shoulders, and he says, My son, Yahuwah is with you. He will prosper you. You're going to build the house of Yahuwah, as he said of you. You and I, our sons and daughters, we have to bless them. We have to remember we and them. We are the living stones of this temple. We build the house one by one, as in by one, as the stones come together, as the curtains of the tabernacle come together. We are built into one temple, into one house of God. This house will be broken down, but it will be built and it will stand forever. And nobody will touch it because Yeshua is the foundation upon which this house is built. So we pray this over our children as well. May you be like Solomon. May you also have a heart like David to build a house for God and to make sure that God is glorified. Jehovah is glorified by his house, building the foundation, putting up the walls, putting the timber and the gold and the silver. And each one of these elements have such spiritual prophetic significance. If you do the Tabernacle Bible Studies of Tree on YouTube, we bring all these elements together and we build the house in our uh, individual uh, work we have as servants in his kingdom 
we are we are also co-working, co-heirs, co-servants, king, co-heirs, co-servants in um, slowly but surely, let your kingdom come, building this kingdom up. Although we feel alone, we are scattered all over the world, the living stones will come together. They will roll from the north, the south, the east, the west, all corners of the earth, every tribe, nation and tongue. They will roll towards Jerusalem and the house will be built. So now, my son, only Yahuwah gives you wisdom and understanding and give you charge concerning all of Israel so that you may keep the law of Yahuwah, your Elohim. So the wisdom and the understanding, the two witnesses, just like Bathsheba and Prophet Nathan, is prayed out over Solomon, over Yahshua, over our sons and daughters. God gives wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding, the two witnesses that is part of the seven in these end days to really bring the kingdom back together. And the and the the rock and the foundation always remains the word of God, which is the law of Yahuwah your Elohim. And if we're not building the house on this law, if we're not building the house on the Torah, it is a house built on sand and it will crumble. In vain do you stand up early, go sleep late and work and build these big houses and temples and palaces and kingdoms and structures for yourself if it's not built upon the rock. It will come to nothing. Um, in the day of judgment, your work that you've built with will be exposed by the fire, whether it was built with straw and stubble or with gold and silver. So if we build upon the law, upon the Torah, the law and the prophets are the two witnesses. We build upon the law and the prophets help us in our in our in endeavors, our efforts, our humbleness, our fear. On, continue your work, endure to the end. Do not waver, do not fear, do not feel discouraged. Go back to the rock. If you if you struggle to build, go back to the rock. Like Nehemiah and and uh, Haggai and um, uh, who was the other guy? Ezra. When they were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, there was so much that came against them. If you do that Bible study, I think it was a Pesach, one of the Pesach studies on the YouTube channel. You really go deep into the significance of how they were building the walls with um, one hand and with the sword in the other hand and how the the names of the gates signific signifies the coming together of the uh, exiles back to the house of God in Jerusalem. Beautiful that we have to recognize this just like Batsaba and Nathan is recognizing this. So Nathan says to Batsaba in the first Chapter of the first book of Kings. Um, while you speak with David, first chapter of the first book of Kings, um, while you speak with David in verse 14, I will come in afterwards and we will have a good case to remind David. Listen, wake up. Yes, the virgin is looking after you. Um, but wake up, David. Um, everything is not comfortable. It's time. It's time now that the kingdom of God is put in place because the Antichrist is ruling out there in the street. So I will come in after you and I'll confirm your words. Verse 15. And Bathsheba went in unto the king, unto his chamber. And the king was, was very old. And Abishach, of course, was ministering unto him. And Bathsheba bowed, and she did obedience unto the king. And the king asked her, What is it that you need? And she said, My lord, you swore by Yahuwah your Elohim unto me to say that assuredly Solomon, your son, will reign after me and he will sit upon my throne. This is not the idea of David. This came directly from God, as I just showed you in, in Chronicles. And now behold, Adoniah reigns. Oops, what's happening? Are the words of God not trustworthy? When we look around us and things become intolerable, and we are alone in this world, and everyone is, is following the Antichrist. He's reigning. Adonia, look at that. He's reigning. He's on the throne. The military is on his side. The churches are on his side. The entire government is on his side. And all the people stand before him, and they've proclaimed him as king. What's happening, God? Didn't you promise? Where are your promises, God? Are you still there? 
Hello, God, where are you? We are going through tribulation. We are afraid. We cannot buy and sell. We are. But we follow Solomon. Because that's who you promised. Wake up. What's happening? Are you sleeping? No. (laughs) God is not a man that he can lie. God doesn't slumber and sleep. He has announced through the prophets already his entire timeline and plan. And for us to study the law and the prophets, we'll understand the timelines and the plans and we'll know the tribulation will be rough and it will be long and it will be difficult. And we're not going to blame God for that. And we're not going to doubt him just because we look out into the streets and we see Adonia is raining. No, we are going to remind him. And by reminding him, we are solidifying our own faith in his promises. We're not going to be scared. Look, Adonia reigns, and you don't even know it. And you don't even know it. God knows everything. Guys, when the, when the times become rough, don't ever think that God doesn't see. Remember Psalm 2 says, There's an appointed time. For the kings of the earth and the rulers of the world to stand up and rebel and blaspheme against God and his anointed, against David and Solomon. And God is on his throne in heaven and he laughs at them. He shakes his head. What do you think you're busy with? It's written. As soon as I stand up from this throne and I, the action that I've been prophesying for the last 6,000 years, you guys will uh, scream. Uh, mountains fall on us and hills cover us. We cannot stand the wrath of God and the wrath of the Lamb of God. So they are appointed seasons for all of this. And we need to study the law and the prophets and build our faith, our house, the house of God, upon house, the house of God, upon the rock of his word that has been promised that doesn't change. So we don't lose faith. We don't lose heart. We don't doubt. And um, Adonia has slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance. Yes, the Antichrist rules in abundance. And he is having feasts and parties and um, election celebrations. And the whole world is happy. And, you know, the two witnesses are dead in the book of Revelation. And the world gives presents to one another because the Antichrist, the beast, has slain the two witnesses and they are dead. Only dead for three days. Then they wake up anyway. Hey, stand back, world, you who do not follow the testimonies of Yeshua and the Torah of Yahuwah. Stand back. These two witnesses may may lay in the street for three days, but they're not dead. Their words are ringing in your subconscious, in your ears. They're in the air. Nobody can run away from it. You try and celebrate and have your feast and drink and eat because tomorrow is, you know, we we die. So enjoy today. I can buy and sell. I can own nothing and be happy, but I'm chartered around by a artificial intelligence, uh, solar charged uh, car and taxi that only takes me in my 15 minute smart city where my credit score allows me to go. I'm happy to be a slave in this Egyptian Adonia system and eat from the meats that he allows me to eat according to my ratio, blah, blah, blah. You don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, you haven't done my Bichut channel studies. And the whole world is following after this. And we see that we are the ones that's not invited. He has all this in abundance. And he has called all the sons of the king and Abiatar the priest and Joab the captain of the army. So the whole world is on the beast side. But Solomon, your servant, he has not called. Me, verse 26, says Nathan, me, even your servant, and Sadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and your servant Solomon, Adonia has not called, because there's a clear distinction between the narrow and the broad road, between the holy saints of God and the rest of the world, between those who follow, although it's difficult and really challenging, who follow the truth instead of the deception and the lie. There's a line in the sand drawn between the many and the few. 
We, the few who are not invited to this world celebration, we bow and make obedience before our God, and we and make obedience before our God, and we remind him of his promises. And she says, And you, my Lord, O King, all the eyes of Israel are upon you. Israel is watching. The lost house of Israel, yeah, they're watching, they're seeing, the beast is ruling. Well, remember the beast they think is Christ. And they don't see much happening about all these law and prophets that these prophet Nathan and Bathsheba and Zadok is talking about. They don't, they, they're watching and they don't see much. They see that Adonijah is ruling. So nothing is happening from David's side. So he must be happy with Adonijah ruling. So while God is not doing anything about the beast, maybe he is the Christ because he's got all the prophecies on his side. He, you know, and if you don't worship him, you, you're killed. So they worship him because he brought peace, you know, peace, peace and security. And he, he brought together the um, uh, all the lost sheep of the house of Israel out of all the churches, making them one, the, the Christian churches, the Muslim churches, the Jewish churches. He makes them all one and he brings them all back into one covenant with him, the false covenant. And he rules from the temple in Jerusalem. So this must be Christ. This must be the son of David. David must be happy because he's sitting on his throne and he's not doing anything. He's old and cold. The law and the prophets is old and cold. These stupid people, one of a family, two of a city, um, that is talking about keep the Torah and understand the prophecies of the true Messiah, understand the king. This is not the kingdom. The kingdom of God is coming and he's going to destroy you with the breath of his mouth. They're talking bull dust, man. No, we to destroy you with the breath of his mouth. They're talking bull dust, man. No, we we now we've got peace for the first time in six thousand years. Jerusalem is the head office of the whole world, and the temple is built, and the Antichrist is sitting in there, and the true temple, which is the humans that is built in the spiritual temple, we've all got the mark of the beast inside our bodies, and we've got the mixing of the clay and the iron in the ten toes of the world, of all the uh, governant um, territories of the entire world, where the ten, ten kings are all making, um, uh, submitting under the beast, and he brought peace over the entire region. He hasn't shown himself as the abomination of desolation yet in the middle of the uh, seven-year covenant. So right now, everything is looking fine. Covenant. So right now, everything is looking fine. David's doing nothing. So the eyes of Israel are upon David. He's doing nothing. So they follow Adonia. It is just logical because they don't know the law and the prophets. They, they are not standing on what God said to David about Solomon. They are not waiting for David, the rightful authorized king, to say who his follow-up will be. They are willing to go with a false serpent lies and the false serpent Absalom Adonia promises. Because why? They are, they are not loving the Torah. And they are not loving and having respect for the prophet Nathan, who was the prophet in Jerusalem at that time. What does the prophet Nathan say when Adonia is being put up as king does? Let's go ask the prophet Nathan. Let's go see what God says. No. Adonia is having a feast, guys. He's giving out free food and free wine. And all the rulers are confirming that he's the king. So it must be right. Let's go and have a party. Let's not worry about the, the words of the two witnesses. That's still bugging us, you know, here in the back of our mind. Dove ons gewete is there, where my conscience is trying to remind me, and the Holy Spirit is trying to remind me, wait, the Word of God says something else. Now I'm going to ignore 
All the truths that my father and my mother tried to teach me, all the truths that I've been hearing from the Messianic churches the last couple of years, from all these weird been hearing from the Messianic churches the last couple of years, from all these weird people whose heads are being chopped off and who doesn't want to take the the chip and the shot shot and the AI and the nanotechnology and the Nephilim seed that is mixed up in all this AI making, uh, it's a whole long story now. They don't want to do that. They are so stupid. They are so peculiar. They are so weird. We're not going to listen to them. Although what they say does make us very uncomfortable, but, 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 but we're just going to do what is right in our own eyes. In our ruler's eyes, in our church's eyes, in our family's eyes, we're going we're gonna to follow the popular narrative. But so is all the eyes of Israel also upon thee, O king. Those in the, scat, in the scattered Israel seed all over the world, their eyes are upon thee, O king. What do you say? Stand up and speak the truth so that your kingdom can be established. And the ones who is waiting for you to speak, who like Bathsheba and Nathan wants to come to you, they are not sure that Adonia is the right king now. They're not convinced because the seed from the tree of life has been planted in them and the water of God's Holy Spirit has been watering that seed. And it's it's growing a little bit, although not much. They haven't totally come out of the system yet. But their eyes are upon you, David. What do you say? So here we've got Bathsheba and Nathan, the two witnesses, confirming the words of God in the ears of David. And all of Israel is watching and waiting. What's going to happen? How will this play out? Revelation 22. We know how this plays out. Come on. Otherwise, it will come to pass when my Lord the King will die and sleep with your fathers, that I and my son Solomon... And of course, together with verse 26, the prophet Nathan and Zadok and Benaiah, all of us, we will be counted as offenders. What is a, an offender? In today's society, the Antichrist is ruling and soon he will sit on the throne. Not very soon. It's, you know, it's still a while. But there's still a lot that has to happen. But when Adonia sits on the throne and David is dead, then those who didn't follow Adonia and, and come to his feast and enjoy the celebrations and the freedom of being allowed to live <laughs> with your uh, basic monthly governance income, um, subs, subs, uh, basic monthly governance income, um, subs, subsidies and whatever, then, um, what was I busy saying? The, the, the Antichrist is ruling with all these people following him, and they are allowed to live. But we who don't follow him will be counted as offenders. Oh, yes. They will count you as offenders. They will, according to the Noahide laws and the Antichrist rules in this world, you'll be offending the law. You'll be against the law. So, Joab in charge of the military, will throw you in prison. You'll be brought before synagogues and, and kings. Your heads will be chopped off. Some of you will flee from one city to the next. Some of you will flee into the mountains. You will be criminals. You'll be branded as enemies of the state. You'll become the terrorists, the mentalists, the crazies. So, David, please, what are you going to do? Our eyes are on you, Bathsheba, the daughter of seven, the daughter of the covenant, the daughters of Zion, the daughters of Israel. Our eyes are upon you. We have Nathan with us. We take our Bibles. This is Nathan. This is the law and the prophets. We have it with us. We know what it says. Come on, David. Come on, Yahuwah. What are you going to do? It's time. It is time. All right, so time is over. 